Hi guys, I'm Lauren Meyer and I'm the elementary ministry director. And I'm Claire Pretlev, the executive family pastor here at Life Church. Welcome to Life Church Online. We have some special resources for your kids that are watching from home. There's some super fun videos that you can find at lifechurchreno.com backslash lckids or at the Life Church Reno YouTube channel. Thanks so much for joining us. Enjoy the service. Welcome to Life Church Reno. I am so glad that you've clicked on this video and that you're getting ready to engage service with us today. If we haven't met, my name is Lydia Long and I'm the Director of Online Ministries here at Life Church Reno. I'm here to be a resource and support to you throughout the week. If there's any time that you need support or prayer or encouragement or even just somebody to chat with, um, you are more than welcome to email me at Lydia at LifeChurchReno.com. I would love to meet you and encourage you and help support you along in your spiritual journey. So service is about to begin. Welcome to Life Church Reno. I'm so glad that you're here.
church. It is so good to see you today. And uh, yeah, first worship gathering, 2023. It's just weird to even say it, right? 2023. It's crazy. But it's our just first chance, first uh, to come together and worship in a new year. And I know for me, the last couple of days, um, I've just been praying that, man, this year, that my worship is different. I worship God different this year. I pray that I experience His power and His presence differently this year. And my, that's my prayer for you as well. I just I pray that God would show up and just kind of shake things up and get us out of our routines and our rituals, and that we really would experience Him in a fresh new way. I think it starts with this next song, just that we're going to sing. It's just a very simple confession. God, I need you. I think for us to experience his presence in a powerful way, it starts with us just confessing our absolute need for him. So let's sing this together.
you're my one defense and my righteousness. Oh God, I can't think of a better way to start the year than singing. As I look through the scriptures, I see this just direct relationship between hunger, need, desperation for God, and these incredibly powerful outpourings and responses by God. I see those two things directly related. As I was thinking about that this week, it just reminded me of a quote A.W. Tozer who says, God is waiting to be wanted. God is waiting to be wanted. I think what he means is God is waiting to pour out his spirit on a group of people who are hungry for it. Man, let that be true of us, church, this year. Let this be a place where he is wanted. Let this be a place where we are desperate for him. Amen. Let's sing this thing. Provide me now. You are. 
we confess our need for you this morning. God, I need more of you. Lord, in my life. God, we need more of you in this church. God, we need more of you in every area. God, we confess our need for you. God, I pray that this year is a year where you stir up in us God, a holy hunger, a desperation that we chase hard after you, that we find you where you're moving, Before we hear from Pastor Day, just invite you to turn if you would real fast and just welcome someone here and then we're going to continue.
Well, it's great to see you guys this morning. Appreciate your flexibility with our shuttles and all of that. Appreciate it so much. If you're watching us online, we're very grateful. Let me ask you an important question to kick off the message. Do we have any Dallas Mavericks fans here? You Three, you matter. You matter so very much. And uh, on December 27th, uh, my Mavericks were uh, playing the New York Knicks, and I'm watching this game, and, and it's one of those times you're watching a game and your team is underperforming the whole game. And, and the Mavs were like down like between 10 and 15 through most of the game, we get down to the very end. At this point, I'm just kind of have my iPad in one hand, halfway watching, just now I've got the two screens going, which is super healthy for you. And, <laughs> and then everything began to change. Qu watch these quick highlights. NBA this year at six. And if they finish this off at seven, Luca, that'll give him 45 points in the game. Well, it's going to try to trap quickly in the backcourt. Maybe he'll make a mistake. Luca thought there should have been an eight second call, and Randall will go to the basket. Remember, New York's won the last five times they played here at American Airlines Center. Here's a quick score from Luca with 41 seconds to go. Just not a guy to me that can handle pressure. And he's averaging 15 minutes a game in the month of December. He's in the rotation. Rainbow three is good for Christian Wood. Thank you. Tech to lead. They had Minnesota force a jump ball against him the other night. There, there's the three. Here is Luca giving the ball up to Hardaway. Luca with the rebound. Puts it on. And it's a foul. With 15 seconds, he's got a chance for his 50th point of the game and a chance to make it a three point game. So guys, you can't appreciate. His read on the ball and the putback being foul. First, you got to get it inbound. And Dallas is out of timeouts, and it's barely into Dinwiddie. And Dinwiddie's going to take a three. Got it! One point game! There's still eight seconds left in the game. Good for them to get it in. Nothing shocks me about this game. And that drew rim. Uh, one of the greatest sports comebacks in all of history, and one of the funniest, I'm about to give you the stat, and, and, and also maybe the funniest victory dance in all of sports history. Um, but it, the Mavs trailed by nine points with 33.2 seconds remaining in regulation. According to ESPN stats and info, NBA teams were 0 and 13,884 in the last 20 seasons when trailing by at least nine or few, with 35 or fewer seconds remaining in regulation before the Mavs pulled off their win against the Knicks. It was one of the greatest comebacks in all. They go into overtime, the Mavs win. Doncic has maybe the greatest triple-double in NBA history, 60, 21, and 10. It was an incredible comeback, and there's something inside of us that loves a great comeback story because I think it gives us hope. That, that, the, that the way that things start does not have to define the way that things finish in our lives and that the way that things are right now does not have to be the way they stay. There's something about a great comeback story, whether it's a story of someone's life or whether it's in a sporting event, there's something about a great comeback that speaks to us uh, on the inside of who we are. It gives us hope that just because things started one way, they don't have to end that way. And today I wanna to talk to you about, about what do you do when you need a comeback? And, and maybe you're here today and, and you're in a spot as you come into 2023 where, where there's part of you that maybe in a certain part of your life that you're really hoping, desiring, praying that this will be a comeback year for you. And so I wanna share with you just a few quick thoughts about that. Here's the first thing. When you need a comeback, realize that you are not alone. 
See, what happens when we look at people that are wildly successful, and, and many times what we're doing is we're, we're seeing them on the other side of the comeback. We see them after the comeback has happened, and we imagine that it has always been that way for them, that they've always been successful, but rarely is that always the case. Uh, everybody needs a comeback sometimes. There was a young army officer in the Mexican-American War he hated military life, he got depressed, became a raging alcoholic, and he quit the army and he returned home. He tried his hand in real estate, but failed. He tried to break into the business world, but also failed. But that was all before his comeback began. The comeback for U Ulysses S. Grant began when the Civil War started in 1861. He was contacted by the Union, Union Army, asked to rejoin, which he did. And soon he guided his troops to decisive victories at Fort Donelson and the Battle of Shiloh and developed a reputation as an aggressive but intelligent commander. Soon Grant rose up to become the top general of the Union Army. A few years of battle followed, but it would all come to a head on April 9th, 1865, when Robert E. Lee and the last of the Confederate troops officially surrendered to Grant and the Union Army, bringing an end to the Civil War in the following weeks. And then he goes on to become elected president in 1868 and reelected in 1872. But if you'd looked at a snapshot of his life, when, when he was a depressed alcoholic who had quit the military, failed in real estate, failed in business, and if you'd looked at that snapshot and, and, and thought that that was the end of his story, it, it, would be the, it would be the life of a completely different person. That was the picture of his life before the comeback began. And, and, and so if you're in a moment where you feel like you need a comeback, you, you, you've got to realize that you are not alone. And I, and I really do think that even coming out of the last three years, that even though things are so much better now than they were a year ago and two years ago and three years ago, in so many ways coming out of all things COVID, the stats still say lots of us still are needing to make a comeback in some areas of our life. Two years after COVID, in general, health aspects seem to be in decline. In the last two years, there's been a 500%, five times increase of people looking online for ways to help with their mental health. Throughout the COVID journey, adolescents have been affected the mo with, the, with the greatest amount of severity in terms of effects on emotional and mental and relational health. And adolescents are still struggling significantly in similar ways that they have since the COVID journey began. But what we saw last year is where the adolescence level of, of struggle has sort of remained similar from 2021 to 2022. What we're seeing this, what we saw last year is the struggle for parents is greater than it was in, in 2020 or 2021. That, which really, if you just do the math, it's like, man, if your kids are really having a hard time, that stuff becomes contagious on you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, laugh with me, folks, we'll have a better time. And so, uh, it's, uh, and so what we're seeing is, is that parents are faring worse than in the earlier COVID journey, and we're seeing rises in PTSD, substance abuse, overall mental health issues are for parents higher than they were uh, early in the COVID journey. Therapists report 43% more people seeking treatment in 2022 compared to pre-COVID numbers. And so if you're in a moment where you're feeling like, gosh, in this area of my life, I, I really would love to experience a comeback. I just want you to know that you're not alone. You're not alone throughout history. That's been the story of so, I believe most people at some point in their life, in some area of their life, have been in a moment where they really felt like they needed to experience a comeback. That's been through, throughout, true throughout history. And, and I believe it's especially true in this season as we come out of these last few years, all of us are coming out of it in different ways, thriving in some areas, but other areas saying, hey, I could still use a comeback in this area of my life. And there's all these different areas of life that might need a comeback. Maybe you're feeling like you need a comeback in your career. Maybe so many people over the last few years have kind of reevaluated where they're at in their career, where they want to be, what they want to do. And maybe you're in a moment where you're just kind of feeling stuck in your career or just not loving it, or it's been a difficult year in your business. So there's part of you that just feels like you need a career comeback. I remember, I remember like in 2011, the, the recession 
had been really hard on our church family and a ton of great people at Life Church ended up having to move away through the recession because they couldn't make a living here. Others lost their homes. In a lot of ways, the church felt stuck. It felt like we were never gonna be able to build anything. And the church felt stuck and I began to feel stuck. And I love progress and I love forward movement. And I went through like a six month season where I was like, I don't know if I can keep doing this. This just feels terrible. And I just felt stuck and really was in a spot where I just needed to make a comeback and, and by God's grace and with the help of some great people was able to do it. But maybe you're in a spot where in your career, you're like, I really need a comeback or, or maybe you need a comeback in your physical health or maybe you need a financial comeback or a comeback in your marriage. Maybe you say, gosh, we've been married for this amount of time and there's for sure been times where it's felt more filled with joy and passion and, and sacrificial love than it does in this season. We need to come back in our marriage. Maybe you need to come back in your parenting. Maybe you need a spiritual comeback. But I, I want you to know that, that, that if you're feeling like you need a comeback, you're not alone. This has been normal throughout history. People in just different areas of life, which sometimes you just have hard seasons, but I believe it's especially true coming out of the last few years. Here's the second truth. When you need a comeback, Remember that God is the God of the comeback. The Bible is very much a story, a book about comebacks. It's one comeback story after another. From the beginning in the Old Testament, as early on in, 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 the, in the patriarchs, we, we see Joseph came from, from being sold into slavery, ended up, and then he ends up in jail, and then, but then later, up, later ends up being the second most powerful man in Egypt, used to save many, many, many lives. It was an incredible comeback story because God is the God of the comeback. And then we see Moses goes for, from, from murdering the Egyptian and having to, to flee, and it feels like, his, like everything's over for him, but then God calls him to do this incredible story of deliverance and redemption. It's this incredible comeback story because God is the God of the comeback. There's a whole book in the Bible, uh, in the Old Testament, called the Book of Judges that is really one story after another of the Jewish people wandering away from God, not doing things his way, and then things get incredibly difficult for them, and then God brings a deliverer for them to lead them back to him and to lead them out of their difficult circumstances. It's, it's, it was a story of one comeback after another after another because God is the God of the comeback. David starts out as this shepherd who no one expected much from. He was sort of the forgotten child that no one thought that was going to ever amount to anything. He was overlooked and forgotten, and he ends up being a giant killer and the greatest king in, in the history of the nation of Israel. We see that God is the God of the comeback. Paul starts out killing Christians and then goes on to become the greatest missionary ever. And really in the cross, we see that, that in the resurrection, Jesus executed the greatest comeback in history where he overcomes life's greatest enemies of sin and death and hell. God is the God of the comeback and he's a God who loves to redeem and he's a God who loves to restore and he's a God who loves to renew. And, and maybe you have been through difficulties over these last months or these last years or over just a prolonged season in your life and, and, and part of you just wonders how, how can anything positive come out of this? How can I come back from this? And, 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 but the good news is that God loves to bring peace and purpose out of pain. God loves to use the most difficult things in our life, things that never should have happened to us, things that weren't his will, things that, that either might have happened simply because we live in a, a, a broken world or we live with sinful people, but, but those most difficult things in our life, God through, the, through his wondrous power and grace has this ability to turn all these things together for good, things that weren't good, Good, can work together for our good. He loves to bring purpose and peace out of the pain. He loves to redeem and he loves to restore. 
He loves to restore what has been lost. And I, I, I think that it's easy for us to look at the last few years and see things that we feel like, I feel like I lost out on this. Maybe, maybe, maybe you feel like you lost out on part of your normal educational experience. If you were in high school or college in that season or you were supposed to go and be with some family and go on a trip and that was taken from you. Maybe, maybe you even had things over these last few weeks where, where, where you had some travel plans and you know, because Southwest Airlines doesn't know how to use computers. You didn't get to go anywhere. <laughs> you felt like it was just taken from you. And it's, but what God loves to do is he loves to restore what has been lost. In Joel 2.25, God says to a group of people who had experienced great loss, he says, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten these painful things that, that, that you feel like have been taken from you. God says, I am a God who not only loves to redeem, bring purpose and peace out of the pain, things that, that weren't good at all, I can bring good out of, but I love to restore that has been taken and he loves to renew. When we tell a meaningful comeback story, what we're really talking about is, is what looks like what feels like a fresh start, where it, it, things were going this direction and it was all bad, and then, and then there was this turning point that began this comeback, and in a lot of ways it feels like a fresh start, and, and really that's the essence of what Jesus came to do for us, is, is that he came to, get, to make us new. It, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it, the Bible tells us that, that if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away, and the new has come. See, Jesus came the first time to, to renew our lives and, and, and to give us peace with him and all that goes along with that, but he's going to come again, and he's gonna renew everything. He's, he's in the business of making things new. When you need a comeback, sometimes you need to clarify what, what real winning is. See, uh, I think sometimes, have you ever, ever been like watching like four-year-olds play soccer? <laughs> Michael, our four-year-old, started soccer last year and the first game of that soccer season, I honestly, I thought, I think, I, I think you could televise four-year-old soccer <laughs> because it's just some good fun. Like one of his teammates on his team is, is like his teammate's primary goal, and this kid goes to our church here, but I won't say his name. Um, but this kid's uh, primary goal during the game was not to kick the ball, not ever. His goal was to go up to his teammates and cover their eyes. <laughs> and I was like, this is the best. I could watch this for days. <laughs> and I was like, why is this game only 20 minutes? I could do this so long. But in every four-year-old soccer game, there's a kid who kicks the ball in the goal and begins to celebrate. But nobody else is celebrating because <laughs> he's kicked the ball in the wrong goal. <laughs> Happens in every game and as a parent, you're just like, I hope it's just not, our, my, not my kid. <laughs> and if it is my kid, do I act like it's okay? But then he might do it again or do I drop the hard, the hard shame? And then he's gonna need therapy, and, and <laughs> that's expensive. And, uh, but I think there's these things in life where we think we're winning, but we're, we're winning at stuff that doesn't matter that much. We're kicking the ball in the wrong goal. And so when you need to come back, you gotta clarify what really is winning. Bob Goff says it this way. He said, I used to be afraid of failing at something that really mattered to me. But now I'm more afraid of succeeding at things that don't matter. Francis Chan said it similarly. Our greatest fear should not be a failure, but of succeeding at things in life that don't really matter. So I think one of two things might be true for some of us. It's possible that you actually need a comeback less than you think you do. Maybe, for some of you, you are succeeding greatly in the things that matter most. 
And maybe you're struggling at some level at things that don't matter nearly as much. It's very possible for some of us that, that maybe you are really winning at the things that matter most. And these areas in your life where you're living with incredible frustration or, or, and really feeling like you need a comeback, maybe it's in things that, that just really don't matter that much at all. And I think the opposite is also, can also be true. It's also possible that some of you need a comeback more than you realize. Maybe you are succeeding greatly in the things that matter the least. I'm struggling greatly at the things that matter the most. See, really the only thing worse than losing at the things that really matter is winning at the things that don't at the same time because then we don't even realize how much of a comeback we really do need. Maybe last year was the best year you've ever had in your business and the worst year you've ever had in your marriage. But because profits are up and things are going great, it numbs you to the fact that, man, I really do need to come back in this thing that really matters most than what's happening in the business. I'm succeeding most where, where it matters less and succeeding least where it matters most. Maybe you have a $3 million home, but, but your kid's heart is far from you and far from God. You're, you're really killing it in this one thing, and, and, but, but in this other thing, you're really, really struggling. Maybe, maybe you're dominating it in your hobby. Maybe, maybe, maybe you won a marathon last year but spiritually you're struggling more than you ever have. And so if I need a comeback, I, I need to begin by clarifying the win. What is winning? Jesus tells us what is winning in Matthew 22, 36. If you have your Bibles, go over to Matthew 22. I know you hadn't cheered yet. <laughs> Matthew 22, starting in verse 35, one of the most important passages in all of scripture, one of the most often quoted an expert in the law tested Jesus with this question, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all of your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. What, what if every morning you reminded yourself the greatest win today is to love? Love is the win. This, the, 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 what determines my success today will not be how much money that I make today, it will not be how many sales did I, did I have today. It, it, will, it will not be what did I acquire today. The, what will determine success for today will be how did I love God today and how well did I do at loving people today. And that that is the win, that love is the win. And then at the end of your day, what if we reflected and, and asked was today a success? Not by how many meetings I had, but was today a success in how did I do at loving God and loving people? Love is the win. And once we clarify that love is the win for our lives, how we're doing loving God, how we're doing loving people, that, that once we clear, and then just so you know, in case you're not sure what does that mean, in 1 Corinthians 13, Paul unpacks what does love look like? It's patient and it's kind and he goes on and on, but that love is the win. Clarify the win in your life. I need to clarify what is most important. Jesus Matthew 16, 26, and what does it profit a man to gain the whole world? What does it profit a man to succeed greatly in the things that don't really matter? What will it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? What is winning? And here's the last question, last thing. When you need a comeback, begin by coming back to God. 
Zechariah 1, 3 says, therefore tell the people, this is what the Lord Almighty says. And I wonder if this is God's message to some of us today. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Return to me, declares the Lord Almighty. And I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. Isn't that a great verse? Return to me, and I will return to you. I think maybe my favorite story in the whole Bible is maybe the most beautiful comeback story in the whole Bible. It's one of the most well-known of all of Jesus' parables, but it's this story we see in Luke 15. Religious people didn't understand why Jesus was spending so much time with people that were far from God, that were known as being extraordinarily sinful, and Jesus tells three stories just to unpack it, but he gets to this third story, and he says there was a father who had two sons. The younger son came to the father and said, Father, can I go ahead and have my inheritance now? Which didn't even know that was a possibility. It's, he comes and says, Father, can I have my share of the inheritance now? And in doing so, he was basically saying, Father, I, what I really care about is your money more than I care about who you are. And the father gives him his, his share of the inheritance and then the son goes off and he says that he squanders the money with wild living, making every possible mistake that he could make. He finds himself homeless, he finds himself hungry, he finds himself taking care of pigs, which as, as, as a Jew to hear that would be to thought that's the worst possible job you could imagine. He's taking care of pigs, he, he's eating the pig food and he finds and he sits there and he finds himself thinking, my father's slaves, uh, are eating and living better than this. I wonder if I go back and I, to my father and just tell him that I'm sorry and I've sinned against God and sinned against him if maybe he will at least just let me be his slave. And then it, the story goes on where the son begins to go home and the father sees him in the distance. He sees him coming back home. He sees him coming back. The father sees him in the distance and, and the father does what, what no older wealthy man would ever be seen doing, which is running. And he, he pulls up his robe and he kind of girds it all up. And then, he, and then he just runs out to his son. He embraces him. His son begins to tell him all the different ways in which he's sorry. And can he just at least be a slave? And the son and the father says, welcome home, my, my son. And he, and he gives him his ring and he gives him his robe and he kills the fatted calf. And they have this giant giant party. It's this incredible comeback story. It's this picture of what it looks like when people far from God come back to God. And, and, and it's, it's one of the most beautiful stories I think anyone's ever told. Uh, and it's, it's one of the most beautiful stories that, that, that we can possibly imagine. But, but here's, I, I think, a way in which maybe if you've been following Jesus a long time, I, I think a way in which maybe we miss it a little bit is, is I, I think Jesus is primarily talking about that moment when we first come back to God, when we first come to, to, to faith in Christ, when we're first coming in, at, to, to becoming a Christian, becoming born again. I think it's primarily talking about that, and Jesus makes it clear. It's primarily talking about that. He talks about how, how, how when one sinner comes, is, comes back, he's, there's this, this great party in heaven from all the angels. He's primarily talking about that. But, but I, I think that, that for some of us, we look at that moment of coming back to God, of, of kind of that moment of being that prodigal son coming back and the father who represents God the father sees us in the distance and runs to us and celebrates and has this giant party. As we see that as, as, as simply only ever a one-time thing. And, and, and here's what I would ask you. Those of you that are married, have you ever only had one moment where you had to apologize to your spouse and make nice? Has that only ever happened once to you? Some of y'all are like sitting next to that person, don't want to laugh too loud, like, <laughs> oh no, happens about once a day. And, uh, and, and I, here's what Martin Luther said. Martin Luther opened the Reformation by nailing these 95 theses, these 95 statements to the door of the castle church in Wittenberg, Germany. And the very first of these theses stated this, 
our Lord and Master Jesus Christ willed the entire life of believers to be one of repentance. It's this idea, and really what repentance, repentance literally just means, you're, just, you're kind of just going this direction, and then you're just doing a, a 180, and, and, and you're coming back, coming back to where you should be. And, and this idea that, that this we're coming back to God in small ways and big ways is just a regular part of what it looks like to follow Jesus. Obviously, it happens in this grand scale when we first become a follower of Jesus, but it's, but it's also this, this ongoing, regular part of what it looks like to follow Christ. One of my favorite old hymns, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. I would sing it for you if I could sing. <laughs> My favorite little line there, he says, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. I don't know about you, but I could be prone to wonder. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. And I think sometimes we wander in big and obvious ways I think more often we wander in smaller, less obvious ways, but in both scenarios, our comeback begins with coming back to God. God wants you to come back to him. Just like that father looking in the distance, he's waiting for you to come back to him. When you do come back to him, just like the verse that we read earlier, come back to me and I, will, and I will come back to you. When you do come back to him, he'll run to you, just like the father ran to that son that had squandered all the money in foolish living. And he'll throw a big party. Let's pray together. question I'd have for you this morning is I wonder if some of you, just through this whole message, there's just been this thing in your heart that said, I need to come back in this area. I need to come back in my marriage. I need to come back in my parenting. I need to come back in my ability to love people that are different from me. And maybe you just have a moment where you just talk to the Lord about that. Maybe you've had a moment in this morning where you realize, you know what, I'm, I'm really thriving in some areas that aren't what matter most. And I'm really struggling in the one thing that does matter most, which is love. Struggling to love God with my whole person, struggling to love people the way in which I love myself and and maybe you would ask the Lord, just, God, would you help me to live with an awareness of what it really looks like to win? Help me to live with an awareness of what matters most and that love is the win. And maybe some of you need to begin 2023 by coming, coming back to God. Maybe, for, maybe some of you, you've never even taken that first step of becoming a follower of Jesus, and it's that first step, that big step of coming to God, trusting in the, the work of Jesus, dying in your place, his resurrection, placing your life in his control where he has the steering wheel, he's the one calling the shots. For some of you, it might look like that first step of coming to, to God in that way, but others of you, maybe you've been following Jesus for years or decades, and maybe there's a big comeback that you need in a big area, or maybe it's a smaller, more subtle thing that's crept in, but it's a moment, even in the quietness of your heart, just to say, God, I, I wanna come back to you afresh. I wanna turn this direction in my life where I've been sort of walking away, whether that's in an attitude or in a relationship or in a habit, this area where I've sort of been walking away, I wanna turn back 
come back to you. So Father, we thank you that you're the God of the comeback. You're the God of the second chance. Lord, I pray that you'd bless each one this week. In Jesus' name, amen. seat back in front of you and the QR code on the screen, you can scan that code with your phone. It'll take you to a form that you can fill out. Let us know kind of where you're at on the journey, and we would love to come alongside you and partner with you and help you along in that way. Um, if you are already a part of the Family at Life Church, you know that we have a lot of ways that we believe that God wants to move in our community and our world and our church, and so we want to encourage you to continue partnering in generosity with us so that we can just co-labor with the Holy Spirit and all the things that he's going to want to do. Um, there are multiple ways to uh, join us in making a difference. Uh, you'll find those on the screen and then here uh, in the building there's also boxes as you leave on the way out as well as lifechurchreno.com. You can click the give tab and find ways to give there. A couple things to know about January 22nd, will two Sundays from now, we are going to be launching um, our winter life groups. And so that day when you come to church, we're going to have our life group leaders out on the patio so that you can meet them, see them, figure out maybe some uh, leaders that you would connect with that you would want to try out some of the groups that we have here at church, um, at Life Church. And so just um, keep that in your mind. January 22nd, you want to be here on site so that you can meet those leaders and figure out what groups you'd like to try and join this semester. And then January 29th is going to be our starting point. This is uh, the best way for you to figure out if Life Church is where you want to call home. We're going to give you um, kind of our history and our background and how we function as a church. So we want to invite you to starting point January 29th, and you can go to lifechurchreno.com to register for that. Finally, church, we just want to pray you out. If there's um, ways that we can pray for you, if we talked a lot about how God was a healer then, he's a healer now, he was a provider then, he's a provider now. So if there's something in your life that has kind of stirred or come to mind throughout this service, we're going to have people at the front and online who would love to pray with you. And so don't leave if there is something that we can join you in prayer about. Um, blessings, church. May you go out in the peace of Christ and that um, you would just experience his peace and his presence in all that you do this week. Blessings, church.